Greetings to all physics and physical experiment enthusiasts. I am Andrei Shetnikov, and recently I had the pleasure of watching a fascinating experiment on the Action Lab channel, a channel that I have been familiar with since my childhood. To do this experiment, you need to take a ruler, place it on the edge of the table, cover it with a newspaper, and hit the end of the ruler. The ruler has the potential to break, but the newspaper will not even rise up. Well, I am going to conduct this experiment using the modification technique as demonstrated on the Action Lab channel. I will place a ruler, position a sheet of paper on top of it, and then release a cube from an elevated position. Here I throw the dice, and in fact the sheet of paper remains lying on the surface. Nothing stirred, you could say. And now I'm cleaning up the paper, throwing the dice again, and the ruler flips over. And I desire to converse at this moment, not only regarding this experience, although undoubtedly regarding it as well, to the same extent as concerning how I perceived it, one might say, at different points in my life. And when I was in class, in the second or third, I was... The boy has advanced. He read Perlman and knew about it. Tom, the fact that atmospheric pressure acts on this sheet from above, and such an explanation was enough for me. Then in the seventh grade, the topic of atmospheric pressure is studied, and there we already calculate the force acting on this sheet from above. The area of it is 20 by 30, which is equal to 600 square centimeters. And it is discovered that when viewed from above, it appears like, on this sheet there is a weight of 600 kilograms. Such pressure is acting, well it's clear that you can't move it. But on the other hand, I lift it up lightly and I lift effortlessly. There is no reference to 600 kilograms in this context. And here you begin to think images are already floating and you realize that, well, actually it's the air. There is both under the sheet and above the sheet. And the air under the leaf from below is also at atmospheric pressure. So we have it both from below and above. The sheet is subjected to nearly identical force. Then you progressively acquire additional knowledge from the field of physics and you commence to think maybe the ruler in conjunction with the sheet lifts some quantity of air from above this location. The main focus is on this mass. Let's assess the mass and area here. Assuming six decimeters, let's say the height is an additional 20 centimeters, then we can estimate that there are slightly over 10 liters of air present in that specific location. Well, and correspondingly a slightly larger amount than 10 grams of its mass. Well, it is simple to verify. Correct. I opt for a sheet and place a weight of 10 grams at this particular location on the sheet. Everything is turning upside down, falling off. Perhaps not as it would be without this dumbbell. However, in any circumstance, the weight behaves in a completely different manner compared to the paper that is placed on top. So what's the matter here after all? In atmospheric pressure or in the inertia of the surrounding air, everything somehow fits and does not fit at the same time. And apparently, it is arranged in a more interesting way. And we need to take it and figure it out. Let us have a look at the movement of the sheet of paper, which has been slowed down 40 times. The cube impacts the ruler, and waves propagate along the leaf. Simultaneously, there is air beneath the sheet. But is the pressure underneath it precisely equal to the atmospheric pressure? When the sheet of paper is lifted, air flows into the dome formed underneath as it enters from the sides of the paper. And for this blockage, the pressure under the dome must be slightly lower than the external atmospheric pressure. Moreover, the faster the sheet rises, the greater the flow rate, and thus the greater the pressure difference should be. And although I depicted the arrows from above and below of the same size, nevertheless the pressure under the dome is slightly lower. And this minor pressure difference is adequate to create a noticeable force, which we observed during the experiment that was conducted. Now let us assess the pressure difference above and below the paper in our experiment involving a cube-shaped object. And for this, I have multiple weights that I will utilize to replace the sheet. I have placed a weight of 400 grams on it. I toss the dice, and it's evident that the weight didn't even move an inch. Now I'll make it lighter. Weighs 100 grams. 
I throw the dice again and the weight jumped a little. And probably one can consider that the action of a 100 gram weight is equivalent to the action of a sheet of paper placed on a ruler. As it turns out, in reality, a 100 gram weight is what holds the ruler, not the original 600 kilogram weight that we were talking about initially. 100 grams is 6,000 times smaller than 600 kilograms. Well, then it turns out that the pressure difference above the sheet and below the sheet is 6,000 or at least several thousand times smaller than atmospheric. Atmospheric pressure is 100 kPa, 1,000 times smaller than 100 pascals, and this difference may be even smaller. That is, the pressure under the sheet is almost equal to atmospheric, but it is slightly lower. And this is an adequate amount to hold the ruler securely and prevent it from tipping over during use. Well, if you have any other thoughts on this matter, you can write them in the comments to this video on YouTube.